So today I'm going to be talking about how you can design a 3D longboard press in Fusion 360 that will allow you to 3D print or CNC out your own molds so you can press your own custom decks. So the first part of this press design process is to figure out what sort of board you're wanting to have and to draw it out and to, to have some sort of plan. So we're going to start with the features along the length in the center of the deck. So this board here, it's got a little bit of rocker, it's got some wedge on the nose and tail, and it's got um, a little upturn on the nose and a pretty distinct tail. And a board like this would be a lot simpler. Um, a board like this is just flat. This is a uh, this is a business card. It's pretty sweet. Um, but so a board style like this is probably going to have a little bit of concave, but is going to be flat everywhere else with maybe just a little kick on the tip of the nose and tail. So whether it's just completely flat, whether it's a drop deck, or whether it's just got a tail or rocker or camber, you're going to want to figure all of that out. So you're going to want to start with a somewhat detailed plan where you know what the wheelbase is between the two trucks. You know what the angle you want the trucks to be at. You know what you know what's going on in between the trucks. Whether, you know, usually it's going to be mostly straight unless there's a drop. You want to know how long your nose and tail are going to be. And you want to know what your overall length of your deck is going to be. So, yeah, so you want to have all this sort of figured out kind of beforehand and, uh, and get it all drafted out. And often what I'll do is I will actually draw all this out um, on a big piece of cardboard or a big piece of wood. And I'll, I'll be standing on it and I'll be feeling, okay, I want my feet to be here and I want the trucks to be here. And I want this to be going on, you know, in between my feet. And I want this. So I'll, I'll, I'll be standing on a real life template. And then afterwards, I'll get the measurements off of that. So here you can see, this is actually a blank board that I've, I've marked up a little bit as I've been taking measurements off of it. Because I use this board that I made um, just with a handmade press. And I wanted to use it as a template for the board I wanted to design on the computer. So when actually drawing out and making your plan, which you're going to reference, um, there's a few things to take into consideration. First of all, when I'm making the boards and the design, I mark out a three inch by three inch square um, for the space that the trucks are going to take up. But setting aside this three inches by three inches, it assures that we can have a nice flat base wherever we are ending up putting the trucks. If you have a trucks and you're putting them on a rounded surface um, and you're clamping it down, either it's gonna bend the deck or it's gonna crack the base plate. So by ensuring you've got nice flat places where you're putting your truck, you're gonna have it's going to be the best things for your trucks and best thing for the design. Another thing to consider is that at any one spot along the deck, you want it to be primar primarily either curving along the length or curving along the width, not trying to do both. Because if you're trying to do both, you're actually causing, you're not bending the wood, you're actually causing it to stretch and compress. And, and that is what I like to call torture bending. You can get away with some torture bending if you've not gotten a strong enough press, but if you're only using a vacuum press, you can't get away with really that much at all. So if you've got a board with, like say, a drop, it's got this bend here, and it's got this bend here along its length. So that means along its width at that point, let's say it's got the nose. Oh, that's a very funky nose. Wow. Okay, so let's say it's got the drop happening here and here for, 
for these two parts of the bend. So that means that the, there's not going to be any, really any concave in this section where it's undergoing this curve along the length. But past that point, you can start developing the concave so that it curves along its width. I think those are the main things to consider when, uh, when getting started. So once you have all your plans made and you've got a good idea of what you're doing, then we'll move into Fusion 360 and uh, start drafting that all out. So this isn't from a grounds up tutorial on Fusion 360. So I'm expecting you to know some of the basics like making sketches and using constraints. But past that, it's probably going to be having a lot of details. So first thing you want to do is you want to go to your user parameters page. And you're going to want to input um, as much parameters as you can, basically, uh, into, the, uh, into this table from your plan that you've drafted out. And you just go to the plus sign here and enter your parameter name, the dimension. Um, you might need to change the units if it's not a length. So for instance, I use degrees a couple times. And we're going to do that. So you enter your user parameter. And how these work is you use these as references um, every, in places in your sketch, and you can change something here on this parameters page, and it will enact that change in all the sketches that use that parameter. So that's important because iteration is a, a big part of designing and making boards. So you're probably going to have some issues at some point that you're going to need to make tweaks to. So having these parameters and making a designable parametric is a good thing to do. So next you want to create a sketch and we're going to create this deck profile. And this is the shape of the deck along its length. So we've got this shape right there. And you can see as I go into it that I'm using the wheelbase parameter, the truck length parameter, nose length, nose height, and you know front angle. I'm using all these parameters to construct uh, this shape. So I'm basically using it to, to place. So these two flats here are the flats where the truck sits. And I have this point, that point, and that point. And I'm connecting them all with splines, with this tool here. So the thing to know when using splines on a thing like this, if I go into it and click on the spline, you can see um, it's got these, these tabs at the end, and you can move these around and change the shape of the spline. On the end where it's connected to the rest of the profile, you want to make sure that it's, it's um, what's the word, coincident with the other part of the profile, right? So other thing I've got here is this circle. So the circle is a reference so I can look at the radius that I'm getting from the spline. So if you look here, if I, so that green circle is a projection of the radius that I'm making with my spline at the end. And um, I don't like having anything smaller than a three inch radius circle on any of my designs. So I can take this circle and I can make sure that this, this spline I'm making doesn't have a radius tighter than that. There we go. The other thing is you might think that you might want a nice even circular progression, but that's actually not the case because the closer you get to the end, the less leverage you have um, in bending the wood there. So you want it to kind of ease into the uh, the curvature. So the most of the curve is going to be further in where there's more leverage, and then it becomes straighter and straighter. So that's a few things I got there. So these two splines where they connect, I want them to be horizontal because that's the lowest point of the profile I want. All right, so 
you construct your profile, you add your drops, you add your noses, your whatever, or, or maybe it's just a flat profile and this step is really, really simple. <laughs> that would be very nice. So anyway, you finish this sketch and you have your profile. So the next thing we're going to be doing is creating these concave profiles that shoot off on one side from the center of the deck. You can see here, I've got it just so it's straight on either end, and then it gets more and more concave as you get to the center. So let's take a look at some of these profiles. So this first one on the nose is just a horizontal line. Let's look at, look at this first one. So you can see nose front truck A. So this attaches at the front of the truck there. And what you've got to do when you make these uh, concave profiles is they have to connect to the deck profile sketch. And if I just delete everything really quick, the way to do that is with the create, uh, project, include, and you want to project the intersect. And then you select the line, that line, and you press OK. And that will let you create something that connects this sketch to the deck profile sketch. And you can make your, your uh, concave profile the way you want it. How I actually want it is like this. So I've got two parameters here I'm using. I'm using my stringer width. So my board's not going to have any concave along the entire length. Uh, for the width of this stringer I'm putting on it. Uh, but you will want to make sure that it is, in, it is indeed flat between where the true trucks are. Could, because you want this nice flat square, that 3x3 three three square. So, I've got this dimension using the stringer width, and I've got this other dimension up here using the board width. And then here I'm just kind of freestyling what I feel like the concave should be, and then I'm using another spline, which is again uh, tangential to this line here, and creating that profile. And I'm creating profiles uh, in significant places along the length of the deck. This board's pretty simple, so there's actually not that many profiles. You need one on either end. And uh, and that's basically the minimum, but I want one on either side of the trucks to make sure that I control this progression here. And I want one in the center. And then this takes care of that whole half, and then I'll just do the same thing on the other side. So the next step, once you've created the deck profile and all these concave profiles, is to do a surface loft. And that's done in this surface workspace. And that creates this, this flat surface. And if we take a look at the surface loft, I'm using the, I'm grabbing all these profiles that I made for the concave profiles, and I'm using this rail here. I'm using the, the deck profile as a, a rail to construct the deck. And it's going to follow that rail and it's going to create this nice uh, surface. What I'm going to be doing with this surface is I'm going to be using the press pull command to offset it downwards by the thickness of the deck. And then I'm going to create another loft in the original position. So now I've got these two surface planes that are the thickness of the deck apart from each other. So this has now constructed the, the shape and profile and thickness of the board. So now we're going to create a big block that we're going to cut the board out of. So we're going to create this uh, mold body sketch here. And this mold body uses the board length and the board width, and it's just placed manually to line up 
with the length of the surfaces. And I'm simply extruding that to make this big old block that's got these surface planes intersecting it. And what I did is I then extended the ends of this top plane uh, because it wasn't quite big enough. I think what you want to do instead is actually back when you're making your sketches, give a little extra space so that these surface planes will be in fact large enough. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the split body command and in the solid workspace, uh, yeah, split body, and I'm using the two surfaces I've made as splitting tools on the, the main body and I'm creating a, a deck, I'm creating a male mold, and I'm creating a female mold. So because of the way that we offset the two uh, surfaces, we've created this mold with the top mold and the female mold having uh, consistent distance between them everywhere along the entire surface. And that's really important for getting a really good layup. Um, using just a uh, solid surface uh, loft or a solid surface push and pull isn't going to be as good as having these uh, using the surface environment and using the push pull here. So this this way it's it's exactly what it needs to be. Yeah. So at this point I I'm mirroring everything and this gives me the full the full size of the board that I am looking for. And there we go. That is my pressed up blank that I'm hoping to get. So next step is we're going to get the uh, we're going to make the board template design. And this isn't strictly necessary, but it's good for visualization at this stage. And I've just drawn out the shape of the deck and I'm going to extrude away and that's going to leave me with the final shape. And I put some nice chamfers on that to make it look real nice. So the final step to kind of get this basically done is I want to get some holes put in the deck. So what I've done here is I've made these offset planes that are going to uh, give me these truck templates at the angle of, of the deck. And this isn't really that important if you're not, this isn't important at all if you've got a flat deck here where the trucks are, but if you've got a, a major wedge going on, so let's say you're making like a dirt board style thing and you got at like a 40 degree angle, it becomes important to make these uh, truck template holes um, in line with the plane of the truck. So I've made both these front truck template and the rear truck template, and I've projected it onto a, a flat plane on the top. And what that allows me to do is then extrude, if you see here, I can extrude um, the position of these holes on the vertical plane instead of, if we look at these ones, on an angled plane. Um, so if you're doing a 3D printed mold, you might want to have these uh, angled drilling guides rather than the projected holes like I have here. So it's projected and it's perpendicular. Um, but for such a small angle, there's really not that much a difference. So this is something to worry about if you're having, you know, more extreme wedges than say, say five degrees or so. So, so what I've done at this point is I've extended the mold to add some, some features for alignment. So I've got a stop on this end. I've got these holes, which I'm going to be using for conduit for alignment. And I've extended, so I've extended the front a little bit there so that if I have a little extra board length, any extra board length is going to be given to the tail. And yeah, and then I'm just building up the rest of the mold. 
So now what you can do is you can grab your mold, the top and bottom halves of the mold, you can take the deck out of there, and we're going to go ahead and make, uh, we're going to we're gonna select the entire project up here, and it's going to grab everything that is visible. And we can export all of this as an STL. So 2 d projects surface, and I can export that. And there I have the files ready for me to put into the CNC process or the 3D printing process to, to manufacture these molds. And after I make the board, if there's something wrong, if this, if this radius right here is too big or if this tail is too extreme for what I'm trying to do, I can very easily go back to my deck profile or into my parameters and make the adjustments I need to get the board the way I want it to be. So now that you've exported your 3D model of your mold, the next step is to get it manufactured so you can start making boards with it. So there's a couple options for that. So I'm going to be trying to CNC mine out of uh, MDF and uh, press the boards that way. However, a CNC machine isn't really that accessible to that many people. A good alternative, however, is actually 3D printing. And here you can see uh, Goodroads has a series he's been working on where he's, been, he's made this 3D printed mold and he's building the deck from it and he's had some pretty good success with that. It's definitely achievable with this system and that's uh, a, this grid is actually really, really strong for supporting the vertical load that you're going to get with a press. Um, and also, uh, Voxel Boards, I know, is actually making boards that he sells, and he's, he uses 3D printed uh, molds as well as CNC molds and handmade molds. So he's also having success with 3D printed molds, so that's a really viable option for a lot more people. 3D printing is often accessible through uh, public libraries or universities or even some high schools and um, so it's it's a much much more available for for projects. So hopefully yeah you get, you're able to get a mold and design it to make the board you want and and get the mold made and, and make your own make your own long boards. So there we go. This was a very long video, probably. It took me a long time to uh, to get this process uh, nailed down a little bit. I've got this uh, this reference uh, design process document that I've made. I've got to update it a little bit, um, but I'll probably make that available. I'll make um, I'll make this mold available on Thingiverse or somewhere, and I'll even make this file that I've been showing off uh, available as well. So you can come in and, and tweak parameters a little bit and change things up. Um, it's going to break if you do too much tweaking with it. And then you'll have to go through and fix things and, and, and reassociate things. But for, for small changes, it should be fairly parametric, allowing you to, to goof around with it and be able to see uh, how I constructed it. So there we go. Um, good luck making your own uh, longboards. Uh, longboard technology over and out.